Hi, this is Mark Wiltshire. Thanks for joining us for this Uritaya Tarena interview with Mohammed Alamarani from Mokka Market. Mohammed, thanks for joining. Thank you. Um, so tell me a little bit about your story of how and why you came to be living in Finland. <coughs> well, uh, I, I came, I was raised in, uh, in, uh, and was born in a village, in a mountain, uh, mountainous village. And it's uh, known for people being uh, uh, or la being uh, interested in in business, and uh, they do their own work. There, there is there are no no companies, and uh, basically they just buy and sell stuff. And I I had that that kind of uh, uh, interest, and uh, I after that we moved to the uh, capital city of, of Yemen. Uh, <coughs> where I uh, I continued my study, and I uh, after I finished the high school, I studied in uh, commercial uh, like uh, pilot aviation, uh, where I studied in in Jordan, and I got the uh, license and uh, the certificates, uh, and after that I applied for work in the uh, and worked in in the Yemen Airways for uh, uh, some some time. Uh, then uh, I, I decided to move to Finland after the war started uh, in Yemen uh, and uh, my main goal was to uh, uh, study and con continue my studies uh, and get the uh, higher uh, certificates and uh, degrees where I like I chose fin <coughs> Finland to, uh, to study and continue my uh, like this, st my studies and uh, uh, improving myself from the educa educational sides, and Finland is known uh, for for this kind uh, for this uh, this field in this field in general. Uh, and uh, I I came to Finland and I ended up here like making my uh, my journey and starting my journey here in Finland. Okay, so when, when you arrived here, what kind of integration process or support did you, did you go through? Uh, at the beginning, I was like, uh, excited and I just wanted to start uh, working immediately and uh, wanted to start doing something immediately. But then I realized that uh, since I came in a, a country with, with a, let's say, new culture and new language, I... <laughs> and a very different language as well. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I thought that it's very important to start studying and learning the Finnish language. Uh, and uh, Where did you do that? Uh, I, the, my first co course was in Kauhava, mm -hmm. uh, in uh, Etelaboy mm -hmm. and uh, it was arranged by SEDU and the, uh, like the, uh, the, all this was organized by, by uh, the TE TA office, uh, and uh, it was an integration plan for uh, which they, which was planned for uh, three years, uh, and I started like studying from that time until 2019, which is about because uh, about two years studying the Finnish language, uh, and that helped me. The, until now. You speak really good English. When did you learn to speak English? Uh, I learned and uh, I, in, in Yemen actually. Uh, I got the support from my family, especially my bigger uh, brother and even my father. Uh, since I was a child, he, he, he was uh, he, like he really wanted since my childhood and supported us. Although we, back then we didn't even live continuously in, in the capital mm. where uh, we lived in, in the village but he, he, he took me and my brother with him to the capital just for us to study and learn the, the English language <coughs> because he knows that in the universities it's needed uh, and uh, I st uh, then I, I studied I studied it more in, uh, in like and it got improved since 2008 and 2009 uh, and it was in uh, in one of the biggest uh, uh, english institutes in the uh, in the country so so in your sort of 
later later years you've learned English sort of from from school and through to becoming an adult then you moved to Finland and decided to focus on the on Finnish and and that Finnish language training did it also include sort of cultural training as well about Finnish culture uh, yeah actually the, the courses was uh, was made like the even the books the Finnish books it's, it's it included this cultural informations and uh, cultural uh, knowledge and learning and we learned the culture also through those those integration courses it's called integration courses so it's it included all this the language and the cultural so what was the biggest cultural difference that you experienced when you arrived here? Well, for me, there are so many uh, cultural differences, uh, but one of them and one of the biggest ones are like uh, going to the shower uh, with other people okay. naked, <laughs> naked and taking, having a sauna yeah. naked, which was uh, really uh, awkward at the beginning. <laughs> okay, yeah, I mean, that's a big, that's a big part of Finnish culture and it's different to many other cultures so it's no surprise yeah um, but you you acclimatized and got there in the end <laughs> yeah <laughs> I'm trying to until yeah. now <laughs> okay. okay so you said before that you were you have this culture of entrepreneurship and business back in your village in Yemen so how did this sort of lead you to becoming an entrepreneur or uritaya here in Finland <clears throat> so as I mentioned before that uh, I have grown in a family or in an environment where most of uh, like the uh, relatives are interested and uh, almost everyone has his own own thing to do like or to, or to work on privately uh, and I got also I inherited that and uh, yeah, uh, since I was there I, I used to help my brother I used to help my my father in in their businesses and their their work <coughs> and I I wanted I I'm, I have been interested since the, I came here to open and uh, to start my own business uh, in, in Finland and uh, uh, since I also learned and knew that uh, the environment is supporting to uh, to start a business and it's not really complicated and really uh, uh, let's say difficult to uh, to start a new business. So you saw as someone who <coughs> moved here, uh, you saw entrepreneurship as a kind of quite easy way for you to start earning your living. A easy way and it is like a goal since the beginning although I am I, I and I have mentioned also this before that even my career is a commercial pilot but it doesn't mean I cannot be uh, an entrepreneur uh, uh, it's even like studying this uh, like aviation uh, it's it was all the idea of having or building uh, my, my business was there and maybe it could be part of the the plan itself and maybe it still could be one day yeah it is true yeah still so we're sitting here now in mocha market tell people a little bit about what is mocha market yeah so mocha market is uh, it's from the name that mocha is is uh, has come from the coffee and even who, uh, if uh, if someone who doesn't know Mocha Market yet would uh, find would see that this is uh, from outside or this is an international uh, name and it, it's international and it's related related to coffee and uh, I I wanted to to let the uh, or, or to make people uh, understand or uh, to pull their attention that uh, Mocha. Is, uh, came from the name of Mocha, which is a seaport located in Yemen. And uh, this seaport uh, was used to uh, export coffee to the world. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, so uh, it's, it's included the, uh, that this is international a place where things from, uh, from all over the world uh, are, are being sold, even if it's not it's, it's not necessary to be coffee, yeah. but the Mocha is, is a place or the seaport where coffee was exported from. 
and, and mocha is a name that's familiar to Finns from from drinking lots of coffee here. It, yeah. And it has a personal connection back to Yemen for you as it well. Is, yeah, that's true. So, <clears throat> yeah, and uh, I, uh, the idea was also to that uh, I want to sell the stuff that people are missing and they want, they need in their daily uh, daily meals. And uh, th these things uh, uh, need to be uh, to be brought here in Saint uh, I am one of those who, who has missed all this this kind of stuff. So I, I thought that. Uh, I need, we need to bring this and we need to offer these uh, products to those who need them like in their daily and who know them uh, already and for also Finns and local people uh, it's, uh, that these things exist, exist and we are giving them a chance to try them and to try like new, new foods and recipes. Yeah and you have food from so many different countries here just just tell people a little bit what some of the some of the different <coughs> cuisines from around the world that they can find here in Mokkama yeah well they they can find so many I I, I cannot uh, inc mention everything here in in this interview some of the most popular yeah ones. but the, the we have like uh, foods from uh, food food ingredients from Japan from th Thailand from India from Turkey from uh, Middle East and from the Balkan area, from the Baltic area, people just can find uh, things that they they wouldn't even think they would find here in in Etelapohyamma. And I was I was surprised the first time that I came into Mokka Market to find PG Tips tea, uh, Ovaltine drink, and custard powder mm. as well, and then was just as surprised when you told me, yeah, these are really popular in the Middle East or whatever. It's like, oh, mm. not just, not just the UK. Yeah, and it's for me, like, I, I really get happy when I see fi people feel happy of finding the thing, uh, those things. And they, uh, it just makes me, uh, encourages me and it, it makes me feel good about when I see that people are really positive about this thing. You decided to open your first shop in Seinioki. How did you figure out the the market potential and decide to open a shop in Seinioki? What was the motivation there? So, as I mentioned before, that I uh, I lived in Seinioki for about uh, two years, and during that time, I suffered of not finding like the the. the let's say the, the, the authentic flavors of the foods that I wanted to cook. Uh, and I miss this really much. Uh, and uh, I, I thought to myself that why, why don't I just bring uh, this, this kind of products here? And then I made the uh, like uh, research about uh, people uh, living here in Etelapohyamman. And uh, it's, uh, uh, like searching from where they are from, how many they are, <coughs> and then I, I try to find out like uh, or to bring so stuff according to their ba backgrounds. Uh, and uh, I uh, s uh, like s s when I started opening the shop, I just I tried to learn. Uh, from from the customers themselves. So the research continued once the shop was it, open. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, by asking them and by uh, if, uh, uh, even like I tried to uh, to make it as uh, wide as as possible, and then find out which things that people are might interested in, are more interested in. So you said that you couldn't you couldn't find food locally. And that that's why Seinioki was a good, a good location. Did, did you have to travel a long way to to get the food that you wanted? Yeah, of course. Uh, uh, like the shortest journey was at least a hundred kilometers. Uh, that's uh, that's not uh, a, a short journey to travel, especially if you have work or study and you don't have time. Sometimes you forget buying some uh, something, and then you just uh, the whole. 
the whole uh, meal will will get delayed until the next month. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if you forget even... <laughs> you can't just pop to the shop that's 100 kilometers away. Yeah, that's away. true. So you, you've got Mocha Market here to be that kind of local, international shop for people in in South Ostrobotnia, basically. Yeah, it is so. And uh, it's, it's nice that I found even people are thankful about it. And it really helped them a lot. And they, they, many people are just giving compliments about it. And they, they mentioned that it's nice to have this shop here. Nearby, we don't need to travel anywhere. Now we can get our stuff what nearby. Is, what is the furthest distance you know one of your customers travels to come and see you? Uh, to my shop. Mm. Uh, well, they come from uh, like all Italy, Bohemian. from Kauhayoke, from Kodika, from uh, even from AVRV, from uh, uh, Kauhava. Yes. So almost all Italy, Bohemian. Yeah, every year is this, like 80 yeah. kilometers away, isn't it? Yeah. So that's a fair, a fair journey. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So when you started the business, what practical issues or, or challenges were the most difficult for you to overcome? Uh, well, yeah, at the beginning, uh, it was difficult to, to decide which type of company to, to start. Is it Toy Minimi? Is it Osaka Ehtiyo? And uh, which is better, which is easier? For from the the like from the establishing and the uh, the uh, let's say registering the name of the company, it's it wasn't really difficult, but uh, just no, getting the full knowledge about about for example uh, from the who should I inform, what should I what kind of paperwork I should prepare, uh, and uh, uh, how can I open a bank account. I didn't even think that my biggest issue was opening a bank account. I thought that it would be just normal because I'm having a business and I want to open, I, am, I have the, the business plan ready and I want to open this shop, everything is ready. Even the, the rent contract was, was ready. But it was like my, my biggest obstacle and it, it, it took a long time until I got a bank account opened. Yeah, I remember us talking at that time mm. and it like you say it seems like the most simple step and it was and it was quite yeah, it was quite it was. difficult and and also this this thing about opening or starting the business when i started my first company we had to put you know a minimum amount of money into the company to start it like two and a half thousand euros mm. but nowadays you don't even have to put anything yeah. to start the company yeah, luckily when I started it, the the new the new uh, law was uh, was uh, effective already, which is zero. You didn't I didn't need to invest any yeah. any money, but it was like this. This was the like the the it was strange that the bank was just refusing to open a bank account. How many banks did you speak to? Almost all. Almost all, all the local banks, yeah. and then you finally found one that was able to work with yeah, you. Yeah, finally. So when you started the company, what kind of support did you get? And this could be financial support or just advice. Where did you go to get, to get sort of that, that help? Yeah, the first, the first, uh, first of all, I tried to, to, uh, to ask uh, friends from uh, like advices from friends and uh, uh, those who already have been living here for a long time or people who are, are from Finland and they know some information informations about it and they were generous of advising me and trying to guide me who to ask or where to go uh, and uh, so I started the first uh, place I went to was uh, uh, where we filled a business plan and we discussed about the plan idea and then it, it moved automatically from them to the TA office where I, I, wa I wanted to apply for uh, the Starti Raha and I got the, uh, the Starti Raha for six months then I, after that it was uh, I was uh, I, I, I could uh, uh, took it for uh, one year but then I didn't need to apply for the another six months. 
So that was the planning, the planning stage. Was there any other sort of training or or coaching that you that you got at that at that sort of startup phase? Yeah, the, there was a, there was a course organized by, by <coughs> Into Senaoki, which was offered for free for those who have business ideas and want to start, and they are like uh, they want to start and they don't know how to make the calculations and like the those kinds of uh, like paperwork and the necessary, necessary trainings for uh, a beginner uh, entrepreneur, entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneur. And uh, it was really uh, beneficial and it was very helpful at that time, especially for me. Helped you get your, get your thoughts exactly. organized. Exactly, yeah, exactly. And to know what to focus on and what things are, are there. Or uh, 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 to, uh, to uh, what kind, uh, especially from the calculation sites. Uh, it wasn't because there are many things that uh, an, uh, the Uritaya should uh, should notice before he, he starts, and uh, it might not be visible from just uh, from the beginning or f f by only having the, the idea. Mm. But uh, the the, tra the training course was like. Uh, gave the, the idea and uh, it, it helped me find, uh, f th think about that also. Mm. What kind of marketing plan did you make when the, when the company started? How did you go about letting people know that Mocker Market was, had been born? Mm. Yeah, uh, well, uh, the, uh, it was uh, at the advertising, from the advertising side, I focused on making a, a, a social media page, a Facebook page especially, and then the, uh, I, uh, from uh, like the uh, friends or the people who I know uh, helped me like uh, uh, co uh, contacting the other uh, like word to word our mouth-to-mouth -mouth, uh, way, and uh, the, uh, I also invited uh, the uh, Epari uh, mag uh, newspaper, and also Elka Elka Lehti also came and made an interview with me, and that gave people an idea about that there there is an existing. Uh, and what sort of what sort of things do you share on your social media nowadays? <laughs> Uh, any new products coming, especially vegetables, because vegetables uh, come to us weekly and they come fresh. So it's important for, for us to let people know that we got the, uh, the new fresh coming and that it's better if they come and get the fresh vegetables. Yeah, because you mentioned before that that was one of your motivations was not being able to find fresh, authentic food locally so yes. so you you share that information and try and get people excited for that week's new arrivals yeah and it is uh, one of our uh, main things or main uh, uh, most important products that we sell is the fresh fresh vegetables so who are your most important partners in your day-to-day -day business activities <coughs> uh, my family are, are helping me almost uh, whenever I need uh, th I need anything there. Uh, uh, for example, when I get stuff and or when I get, uh, need somebody like urgently uh, to take care of the shop. Uh, <coughs> but I also get other advices and help uh, like uh, support uh, support from uh, from friends and uh, from some organizations like uh, WISE, uh, they sometimes they offer me advices and we meet from, uh, we have meetings from uh, time to time. Uh, and I also buy stuff from local suppliers in Finland and from outside and this, these uh, products or <coughs> uh, the deliveries come on time and they, that makes, may, makes our work uh, easier. So tell me now a little about the growth of the company. Mocker Market's been going for two and a half years. Um, you've just opened this fantastic new shop that we're sitting in now. What's the, 
What's the aim of this shop? What, what is different about this compared to the original Mocha Market? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, <coughs> uh, it's, it's been challenging uh, since the big, uh, when, when we started the first shop at the beginning, when the Corona came and it was difficult to bring all the, all the stuff we needed to bring back then. And also the, uh, the uh, differences of the prices, uh, price uh, from place to place. Uh, but uh, having the new shop also it's uh, it's it was uh, it's also from our vision of uh, improving and uh, we wanted also to, uh, like since the beginning to improve and to get uh, to get more people to know the, that we uh, exist this uh, this uh, the concept of this shop is not re really different from the other one but the speciality is the, the difference. I mean, the speciality for our shop in general, this one and the one in, in the, the center, we offer uh, new stuff and daily need uh, products from, for, uh, for uh, peoples from different backgrounds. And we want uh, new people to try our products and to, to know that we have these products and that they can get them easily. And this new shop is in Idia Park in Sainioki. So how is, how is that helping you to find new customers? What's the benefit of being here? Uh, uh, of course, because since people are, uh, come here uh, of, uh, more and they come uh, more often, uh, there are, uh, the Idia Park has uh, a, sell, a collection of many brands and uh, shops and uh, this this would be completing this this uh, selection and this collection we, we would be or we want to be a part of this uh, nice and uh, versatile coll uh, collection and um, is it bringing you different types of customers is that what you're experiencing yeah we uh, until now we we uh, we found that we we are getting new customers and uh, different types of people and more customers are coming in, which is the things we were aiming for. So the town centre shop is the destination itself for people who know what they want. And then the Idia Park shop, the centre is the destination and you just get more people coming past and, and coming to see what you've got to offer. It's true, yeah. And if uh, we... Uh, we are also trying to make it easier for people to get their stuff. They can even, for example, call us and uh, ask or uh, tell us that they want, if somebody, if someone is coming from 100 kilometers or 50 kilometers and he co couldn't go to the city center, he just can call us and he, that he needs uh, this kind of, uh, this, this specific product. And if we don't have, uh, have it here, we can bring it from the other place and bring it for him. Ah, interesting. Yeah. It's nice kind of modern twist on traditional small retailer customer service. Mm. Nice. We, we focus on that, on, and on the customer satisfaction. So what are your future hopes or dreams for Mocha Market? Where do you want to take it in the future? Uh, first of all, uh, our main goal and our main target is that to keep the our customers satisfactory. We are happy when we get our customers happy. Uh, and we want, we are now focusing on improving ourselves here in the local area. But uh, I also dream uh, to bring the, uh, the coffee with, uh, from my country, Yemen, which is known for growing uh, a very high quality coffee which uh, grown in mountain, uh, mountains uh, and uh, uh, they, uh, and, uh, they are harvested by hand and uh, it has its uh, origin, authentic and uh, special flavors. And I want to s sell this coffee here in Finland and make people, <coughs> Finnish people know uh, this or taste this uh, uh, special and uh, diff or special flavor coffee. So really building on the mocha yeah, name which is in, the, in yeah. the company. Mm. Yeah. Which is like the main idea of, of making the name of the coffee. And what about yeah. growing the business into the, into the future as well? 
we have we have also hopes and dreams also and plans to make our uh, shop bigger it could be in somewhere else or it could be here in San Oki. that's great Mohammed Almarani from Mokka Market thank you very much for joining us today sharing some of your story that's already happened and some of your story maybe still to come thanks very much thank you for inviting me